You may think this will never happen to you, never happen to any of your friends or loved ones. The sad truth is that now no one in our city, no one in our state, no one in our country has that luxury anymore. That was Mayor Craig Greenberg one year ago today after a gunman walked into the old National Bank in downtown Louisville and started firing. Five people were killed. That's a tragedy that gripped and changed our city forever. Today, Louisville and communities beyond Kentuckiana will honor the victims. Jim Stratman joins us live now from the former site of Old National Bank with the details. Jim, there is now outside a memorial as well to honor those lives lost today. Yeah, Grace, you can see that just over my right shoulder. You can see five vases filled with flowers, a remembrance of those five victims who died. And remember back to that day, I remember there was a lot of uh, optimism that day. It was a very sunny day, a very bright, a beautiful spring day. A year ago, or a year now forward, it is quite the opposite. The rain has started to pour down here on Main Street, really kind of adding to that somber, somber element, that somber tone that we believe this day should hold as we remember those five victims. And here they are for you right here. These names uh, forever etched in the memories of people throughout Kentuckiana and especially here in Louisville. They are Deanna Eckert, Tommy Elliott, Jim Tutt, Joshua Barrick, and Juliana Farmer. They were all employees at Old National Bank and they were killed when a gunman entered the building and began firing the morning of April 10th last year. For the families of those victims, this has been a year of coping, of processing, of healing. And last month, we had the chance to talk with Jessica Barrick, the wife of Joshua. She said that in the days and the months following her husband's death, getting through the day-to-day -day of this new world was a battle. It was just trying to survive those first few days with the kids. And some days it's still like that. We were just kind of getting to this like sweet spot where the kids were more self sufficient and doing their own thing and like he and I had our time again and it's so unfair to think about all that we were robbed of. Jessica said their family is moving forward but they'll never be able to actually move on. Today will be another step in that, however. And now in remembrance of those lost, all Old National Bank locations in Louisville will be closed today. All other locations will close at two so that team members can participate in a walk to remember. Governor Andy Bashir and Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg will also host a special ceremony at Metro Hall beginning at 2.30. And we will bring that live to you right here on WHAS 11. Now, coming up in the next half hour, I'll have more on today's memorial, plus reflections from two other parts of what happened on April 10th a year ago. The police response and the response from the medical teams out of U of L Hospital trying to treat victims. We'll have more on that coming up in just about 30 minutes. Grace, Eric. Jim, thank you. This comes as the gun shop that sold the gunman the weapon faces a second lawsuit now. It was filed by the families of Tommy Elliott, Juliana Farmer, and Dina Eckert, and includes a gun accessory supplier and manufacturer. The suit claims River City Firearms ignored red flags when the gunman bought the AR-15 used in the shooting. It also accused the manufacturers of failing to ensure the products it makes aren't sold to people who pose a risk to themselves and others. This is similar to a lawsuit filed back in January by four survivors in the shooting and the families of James Tutt and Joshua Barrick who were killed. So far, River City Firearms has not responded to our requests for comment. Old National Bank and the American Red Cross are working together to honor the memory of those impacted by the mass shooting. The two are hosting a blood drive. That's today. We know blood donations were critical in saving lives on that day. Now, there are five participating blood donation centers throughout the city. Their hours do vary from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m., and it depends on the location. If you'd like to donate, just click on the link in this story on our website, whas11.com. Indiana State Police are investigating an officer-involved shooting that led to the death of a woman in North Vernon. It happened around 7 last night at a home on Thomas Street. Police say 23-year-old Rachel Blake was armed with a knife inside the home. After numerous attempts to get her to drop the weapon, police say Blake refused. She then moved towards officers. That's when two officers say they fired at Blake. She died at the scene. All officers involved have been placed on administrative leave. The JCBS school board is ready to vote on its transportation plans for next year. The board has called a special meeting for tonight solely to vote on the plan. It comes two weeks after the board tabled the same vote, saying it needed more time to review a recently released audit on the transportation system. 
There are currently four options the board is weighing. Option one would provide bus transportation only to students attending their reside schools, cutting out the majority of magnet and traditional school kids. Option two would create a hub for bus pickup and drop offs. Option three would keep things as they are. And option four would provide bus service only to schools meeting a threshold of economically disadvantaged students. The board hasn't revealed which plan it is voting to approve. Tonight's meeting is set to begin at six. Eight minutes after the hour now and after 15 seasons, John Calipari is officially leaving Kentucky. He made that announcement yesterday saying it's time for new leadership. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice, that the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program. Kelly Perry won more than 400 games at UK, including a national title, but many fans grew frustrated with early NCAA tournament exits the last few years. Kelly Perry did not confirm where he's headed next, although numerous reports indicate he's finalizing a deal right now with Arkansas.